What's going on everybody? Kyle here from Softwash TV. I hope you're doing well. I just wanted to make a quick video today about my pressure washing toolbox that I keep on my rig. Anytime I show footage of the truck, people always ask, they're like, what's in the box? So we're going to talk about it today. Let's jump right into it. All right, guys, I'm going to go over everything inside my toolbox, how I keep it organized or semi-organized. It could turn into a mess really quick, but at the end of every wash day, I kind of go through here quickly. I have a checklist of everything I need to do for my wash truck to make sure that I'm set up for success for the next business day. So first things first, easily accessible, guys. I have my wash gun right here. This is one of the guns that I use most often right here. M5 adjustable twist nozzle, and then I also have a shooter tip right here. Then for my main machine, I keep it handy. I keep my remote control for my downstream injector box right there. I like to buy these hefty tubs just because it helps keep me organized. I also have these little toolbox organizers right here, but we'll get to that. We'll kind of go left to right. So starting up here, this is my primary respirator that I use. I get asked all the time, what kind of respirator is that? Even though I have a, a respirator video, it's made by Parcel Safety, guys. You need to make sure that you get the one with the bayonet style filters. I ended up buying another respirator and I got the wrong one. I think they sent me the wrong one, but uh, either way, it's better than nothing. So this has the bayonet style filters. That way it protects me not just from sodium hypochlorite, but also acids because I spray a lot of acid on hot concrete. So it helps me stay safe. You know what I'm saying? I got these hefty containers right here in the top left. This is where I keep all of my sunblock. I go through this a lot, especially in the summertime. I've already had melanoma cut out of my back, guys, so sun cancer is no joke. Stay safe out there. This tub, I like to keep tape, and I use red stucco sure tape. So I like this tape because it does well. I see a lot of people using what I would say is the wrong tape, guys. This is really good because it does good when it gets wet and it's not super adhesive. I've seen guys use duct tape and that will actually leave a sticky residue on people's hardy board or their vinyl siding and on painted surfaces like hardy board with duct tape, you could even pull off the, uh, the paint off of the surface. So you don't want to do that. This is probably the best tape you could get. If you don't have that, this is a good substitute right here. This is multi-use 3M tape right here and it comes in different colors i like getting the white one then i have some two mil nine by 12 plastic drop cloths these are plastic sheets that you know they're in the painter section at lowe's or home depot these are great if you have some sensitive plants most shrubbery and bushes you're fine just pre-wetting them down before you wash but on some really delicate stuff maybe you have japanese maples or some roses or something, you could throw these over them. If I'm on a big project, I'll throw some Tyvek tarps in a tub like that. So this is just for like day in, day out house washing. It's nice to have a few of these on your rig. Now inside the cab of my truck, I have an actual, you know, wrench set with all different types of sockets and everything, but I keep odds and end tools in here spare quarter inch inner diameter hose in case i need a, a spare hose for downstreaming you know i got tools to cut hose in here i got screwdrivers nut drivers hammer i keep vice grips in here basically um or channel locks any any type of tool that i would use on a regular day-to-day -day basis if something goes wrong with my equipment i could fix it with this or the toolbox i keep inside my truck i like to keep a couple of these one gallon containers these are really great because instead of a round jug, you save space with these. So I have some Eliminator right here. Let me take this phone call, guys. I got a business call coming in. Guys, I'm back. It's March Madness. The phone's ringing off the hook, so just booked a job. Where was I at? I keep some at least one gallon of Eliminator. This is the surfactant that I use for day in, day out, house washing, roof washing. Great soap here. I got some F9 acid. This is oxalic acid right here. I need to top that off. And then I have some gold assassin degreaser. So these are great to have on the rig, guys. That way, if you have some pump-up sprayers, you could fill them with this, with whatever product you have. Or if you want to add soap to your sodium hypochlorite, you have what you need. And like I said, guys, this is just the bare minimum in this toolbox. 
uh, if you have a special project where you know you need a lot of degreaser for a gas station or you're doing some restaurants, obviously I'll throw, I'll have a tub like this in a cradle on the back of the truck or on the deck and I'll put all of my pump up sprayers. I even make specialized bucket sprayers just to directly apply that type of chemical to the ground. So acid, degreaser, soap. Next thing I have another big hefty container up here and I already addressed this guys but it's just backup respirators and filters make sure you go check that video out if you want to learn more about respirators i talk about the types of filters that i use because they're not all the same and this is another full face respirator here's a half face respirator so i get asked a lot on my channel people see me wearing respirators in my videos and they're like Hey, Kyle, I really don't see anybody else wearing respirators. Do I really need one? I'm not going to tell you guys what to do, guys. I'm just going to speak for myself. I like being safe, so, you know, I think it's better safe than sorry. Yes, it's uncomfortable. Yes, it gets really hot when it's 100 degrees outside and you're on a roof. But, you know, I gave my family my word that I was going to wear a respirator. So I don't break my word for nobody. So that's what I do. So you're free to make your own decisions, but... I like being safe. All right, next up, these little tool organizers here. This is where I keep all my little odds and end parts. That way they're just not all over the toolbox. So first things first, you know, I have my three eighths and my quarter inch O-rings here. I have all different types right there because O-rings inside your quick connects, they get chewed up all the time. And then next thing you know, you're leaking and leaking chemical all over your arm. So Make sure you have O-rings. I have some spare J-rods here, or nozzle holders, whatever you call them. I like keeping four or five on the truck. Have some thread tape here for whenever I swap out those quick connects. Have a little tub right here just for different nozzles that you're gonna use. Then I have Downstream injectors, guys. You can't have enough of these things. I like to keep a few on the rig. And then whenever I run low out of any of these things, I keep a spreadsheet on my TV. I got a TV over here where I basically have like a spreadsheet of everything that I need. I'll go through it and make sure that I'm tip top. I got everything on the truck and then I have everything in the drawers in my toolboxes here in the shop. Whenever I run low, then I'll place an order. A backup high pressure ball valve. In this drawer, I have swivels. So this would be the swivel that you would have. This is a super swivel you would have on your hose reel. This is a swivel that you would have on your gun. So I like to have one backup of each. I keep two gallon freezer bags in here. That way, anytime I have a dirty respirator and I wash it off, instead of putting it you know, in a dirty bag, I like to have backup Ziploc bags right there. Then I keep these orange nitrile gloves a lot of people ask what type of gloves i wear they're nitrile i go to like AutoZone or o'reilly's and i buy them there so they are sized uh small guys so like normally i wear large gloves but i have to buy xl or uh, double xl gloves whenever i buy these just food for thought all right the next container i have here I just have some spare barbs. Now these are half inch national pipe thread by quarter inch barbs. These are what you're gonna see like on a lot of guys rigs. Right here I have a half inch bulkhead, a 90 degree elbow and a quarter inch barb. This is what I would use for downstream injection. I also keep them on my remote downstream boxes. You can see that motorized ball valve right there. They're half inch by quarter inch barb. Then I just have a variety of, you know, different quick connects. So I got some plugs here. I got different quick connects right here. So it just, it just pays to have backups, guys. I have a pressure gauge right here, an inline pressure gauge, so I can check my pressure if I need to. Got some fuses from, if, if you're using like a 12 volt system, you wanna have backup fuses. So get yourself some 20 or 30 amp fuses. And here's some more plugs, guys. Here's some stainless ones. Stainless. Some of these are probably zinc. So 
The stainless ones are better, guys. Pay a little bit more money and get stainless. Extra turbo nozzle. Spark plugs for my machines. So I keep different spark plugs for my IGX 800. I have a 690 and I also have a GX 200 right here for my soft wash system. So backup spark plugs and I already said backup high pressure ball valve. What's up everybody? Before we continue, just a friendly reminder, make sure you check out Softwash TV Pro, the exterior cleaning industry's answer to the need for quality pressure washing and soft washing training. Not only will you learn about safety, but we will teach you how to wash. Learn from a pro the ins and outs of house washing, concrete washing, and low pressure roof cleaning. We teach wash techniques and preventative measures for property protection. Softwash TV Pro will educate you about industry equipment and all of the chemicals used during daily operations. Learn marketing strategies from a successful pressure washing company and take advantage of numerous resources that will help you start and grow a pressure washing company. Thanks for watching. Now back to the video. All right, moving to the right. I like to keep one of these two gallon freezer bags and I have black grocery bags in here. Now this is what you would see like at a gas station where whenever they're bagging up your, your waters or your juices, you know, they'll have these grocery bags. I like using black because this is what I use to cover people's cameras, cover people's electrical outlets. And we already talked about this tape right here. Use the sure tape. Don't use duct tape and don't let me catch you using blue painters tape because that just soaks up water guys. You could still burn up outlets with blue painters tape. Ask me how I know guys. All right. So grocery bags. I keep these big heavy duty uh, contractor bags, trash bags here. This is for whenever I'm doing gutter cleanings. I go through a ton of these. So garbage bags. And then I need to make this more accessible. I'll probably leave this one on the top, but this is some, you know, first aid type stuff. I have a, a dump valve that I could dump fresh water on the other side of the truck. So if I splashed chemicals in my eyes, I could, I would initially, I would run over there and start flushing my eyes out. But I have one of these eye wash kits. It's like a saline solution. And you just pour it into this device real quick. Let me pull it out. And basically you put it in this and then you squeeze it into your eye and flush your eyes out, guys. So I've never had to use this. I probably need to go ahead and take all this off to make the process quicker if I have an emergency. But tell me what you guys use as far as like flushing out your eyes or if you have an employee, you get something in his eyes. Do you all have something like this? And then I have a first aid kit, guys. So that's everything I keep inside this toolbox. Like I said, it's not everything that I use on a daily basis. I have a lot of extras inside the cab of my truck, like spare jumper hoses, spare belts for my machine. Uh, as soon as I open that door, I could f fold my seat down and I have my fire extinguisher. So if you don't have a fire extinguisher, I need to make mine more easily accessible. But make sure you have one of those as well. That way you don't have a fire and burn down your whole rig, you know, because that would be a bad day. All right, guys, that's a wrap. I just wanted to show you guys what I keep in my toolbox. Like I said, if I get asked several times the same question on my channel, I like to answer it. So hopefully you guys learned something. If you just picked up one thing, let me know what it was that you're going to start keeping in your toolbox. And if, hey, I'm all about learning too. If there's some stuff that I didn't mention, drop it in the comment section. It might help me or help somebody else out. So we're all about helping people here on this channel. I'm about to jump off of here and go get some dinner and finish my day out. But before I do, I got to finish some work on the rig. It's always maintenance, guys. It's always something. So you can see I have a mess here. I've been slicing and dicing. I got butt splices everywhere. What I just did was I just built a new remote downstream injection box. A lot of you guys, if you've been with the channel for a long time, you know I used to sell these things suds boxes i no longer sell them but i still build my own and, and it saves me money and I, I just like how i build my boxes you know i have an on and off switch voltage meter i keep one of these right here that way i can charge my phone or earbuds or something like that when i'm out in the field then i have this plug right here where i could plug in an auxiliary light on the side of the truck that faces the house that i'm washing so I use that as a visual indicator to see when I'm applying soap and whenever I'm applying uh, clean water. So I just built this one right here, got it wired up. 
to my battery. Only thing I have to do is put my quarter inch line, run it to my downstream injector, and then run my hose back up. I'm gonna put a new elbow up here and a new uh, quarter inch barb and I'll be good to go. I actually just, I'm throwing a new injector on there too. Let me walk around here real quick. So, like I said, guys, it's always maintenance. Just threw a brand new quick connect here because the other one was getting all chewed up. So I might as well replace that swivel too. But I just threw a brand new check valve injector on here with brand new quick connect. So I'll get this hooked up and I'll be good to go. I haven't had one issue with this remote downstream box in two years, guys. It's still running strong. The only thing that's wrong with it is the screws are starting to rust out and the box is oxidized. Look at how much better that box looks, but make sure everything works. Yep. Brand new remote. Sheesh. One of the things that I do like about these boxes, because a lot of guys make these their own, but they use the metal motorized ball valves and i got these jokers sent in from japan these are full pvc motorized ball valves so they hold up very good against chemical that's why i'm that's why they last so long guys so two years plus on this zero issues all right guys that's a wrap as you know i like mexican food so your boy's going out here to get some carnitas tonight and i'm just feeling good feeling blessed it's springtime. You can see my Bradford pear trees are already blooming. I hate these freaking trees. These trees stink. Y'all boys know what it smells like, but that's that, guys. I'm ho hopefully, fingers crossed, guys, next month, I'm already looking at what I have booked. I'm on par to set my personal record for my best month in five years, guys. I don't normally talk about uh, numbers and what I make. I do very well pressure washing. I'm going to absolutely crush it next month, guys. I'll be honest with you. Years ago, I was talking to some people that had companies that are two and three truck companies, and I heard their their gross revenue, and I was like, oh my God, that's that's insane, man. I can't, can't even imagine that as a one, as a solo operator, one man, one truck, I'm going to break that number, guys. I'm going to crush that number. So fingers crossed. Um, also I'm trying to think of what else has been going on with me. I haven't made a video in like two weeks. I've just been grinding guys getting ready for spring, but fingers crossed, uh, it's in the pipeline. It's not official yet, but I'm about to land the biggest contract I've ever had. And I hope I do because it's going to be insane footage guys insane. It will probably take working weekend, work, maybe working Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, it'll probably take like two months for this one project. But if I do, it will be awesome footage, guys, like drone footage, huge buildings, four or five story buildings, boom lifts every weekend, big contract. So keep your fingers crossed for your boys, for your boy. I hope you guys are crushing it. Um, what else is going on? That's about it, guys. Stay safe out there. If you need anything, I do coaching calls. If you haven't jumped on the team, jumped in the program, check out Softwash TV Pro, guys. Hope you guys kill it too. Peace.